Hey guys, it's JK here. A lot of new exciting content today, and I wanted to give you like a first peek at it. Uh, by the time you watch this video, you've probably already attempted some of this, but I wanted to give my first impressions and uh, just initial reactions, I guess. Uh, I'm by no means an expert at this point. I'm not giving a guide. I'm not giving a tutorial, but I can maybe give a couple of hints here and there. So uh, I've cleared both of the levels, um, but extra one is definitely a lot harder. I mean, it was to the point where I did a continue, but at the same time, I brought the wrong elements and I didn't know what to expect. I didn't bring the right guys. So um, this level is primarily made up of light element on the left side and thunder on the right side. So um, I haven't attempted it again. I've only done it once, but you know, I probably think I'm going to take some kind of party like this. But maybe not. I don't know. So a tank to go up the left side and just kind of tank all the, um, you know, arrow shots and all that. Um, if Selena just stays away from the thunder element enemies, she should be okay. She should be very difficult to kill. And of course, she has the self heal, so she can sustain herself. Uh, Rosa is gonna be the dark element hero that's gonna kill the light element uh, enemies. And you know she has good mobility and. Uh, jump and everything to get to them pretty easily and this is all in theory i haven't tried it out but uh, she's also pretty sustainable i mean you know if she has to she can use things like blood drain or you know her hp um like her reactive ability also helps sustain her as well and then the wind element units to clear out the right side but i mean i, I don't really know if this works or not so i just want to give you a quick peek at the level again extra one is the harder one this is the one where you farm for um, Sita's axe or Sheeta. So let's just take a quick scan here. You have light element units over here on the left. These guys are just regular soldiers, not a big deal. This dude in the middle is basically a chronomancer. He can overclock, um, kind of annoying. And this guy all the way on the left, this ranger, is probably the biggest threat. Because what he'll do is he'll just constantly spam arrow rain on your party. And it doesn't even really matter like if you're far away. He can still reach you somehow. It's like some kind of modified arrow rain. So I was like standing all the way over here and he was still hitting my party. So that's why you want to get somebody to get up here and clear this guy out as soon as possible. Uh, she does appear by herself. Um, at least for now. I don't know if somebody else spawns here or not. And then on the right side we have a couple of thunder element units. Uh, this guy is also a ranger, I think, but he actually does move down and he doesn't seem to spam arrow rain, at least not as much. Uh, there's a treasure chest there. It's, I don't think it's a guaranteed shard or anything. And then after a round or two, uh, there's going to be a couple of armored eldritches that um, spawn. And they're actually no joke. Like, there's, like, even if he was standing all the way over here, he was hitting my guy over here for like 700 damage. So he had like sniper range with one of his abilities, so don't underestimate him, definitely um, be careful of that. Okay, and as you can see here, my first uh, slot was Selena. She ended up all the way on the right. So with whatever you want to you know, be on the left side, you have to put them on the right side of the party setup screen and vice versa. So you have to kind of flip the arrangement. I didn't know that. So keep that in mind. I should have put um, Yomi as first. And then uh, Elmira, and then Rosa, and then Selena. So they would just kind of have the ideal starting positions. But again, I don't know if this party works or not, so don't, don't pay attention to that. Okay, I'm going to retreat here. You generally want to have the right element, but it is actually possible to kill them with off elements, so it's not quite as strict as we've seen in the past. Okay, and the extra two is actually pretty fun. And it would be doable without death. I just kind of messed up a little bit. Um, Yomi know, probably wasn't a really good choice here. Uh, let's see here. Uh, maybe Selena would be fine. Okay, so for this one, um, I highly recommend bringing Ashida. Uh, job one is okay. Actually, you want to have her as job one, regardless of what else you have. And then Almira uh, here. Or it doesn't have to be her, I guess, but. Uh, I put a uh, snowman hat on her so that she can actually provide jewels to Sita. And then you want to bring a healer of some sort, some kind of support. And let me just show you a really cool trick. I think a lot of people would be able to figure this out because it's so visually obvious what they're intending to do here. They're really trying to make um, 
Sheeta like the MVP of this map. So let me show you what I mean. So I'm gonna take Almira. I'm gonna give a present for you to Sheeta. So that she'll have enough starting jewels to do her um whatever it's called, the leap slash or whatever. And these guys can actually provide MP to each other by shooting arrows at each other, which is kind of cool. And then, again, I'm not going to clear the level, but I'm just going to show you enough to give you a taste. Most of the enemies on this map are thunder, so wind is definitely the element you want to bring. And even if you um, are up against like a different element, you're generally able to kill them, even with your wind element anyway. So, all right, check this out. Look at how they're lined up. It's so obvious that they wanted you to do this. You go to your axe abilities, you do leap slash, and then you click on this guy right here. And look how many enemies you can hit at one time. It's pretty nuts. And what's funny is that they don't even really try to move or anything. So, yeah, it was clearly designed with this ability in mind. And they're trying to make you use um, Sheeta, which I have no complaints about. It's a really cool strategy. Okay, that guy actually did move. Yeah, this is why you want to bring a healer. Okay. And then we don't really, uh, really care what's going to go on with this one. Maybe shoot this guy. And then watch. Boom. So yeah, pretty cool. You want to make sure to have her stats up high enough to kill them all. I mean, I don't know what exactly your attack threshold needs to be, but just make sure you build her up. Mine isn't like completely maxed out, but she is on job 11. But I'm sure you can do it with like a slightly weaker one as well. So yeah, that's the cool strategy for this one. Uh, I'm not sure if I scanned the map yet for you guys, but I'll do that real quick. So... Yeah, over here, there's these little, I don't know, statue-looking dudes. They only have 8 HP, but it takes, like, they only take, like, 1 damage at a time unless you um, use a defense-ignoring skill. Same thing, same with this guy. There's a Thunder Element dude right here trying to sneak up on us, so you can kill that guy pretty easily. I could probably snipe him in one shot. Here is um, Mazamune. Um, even if you bring a Wind Element, like I brought my Bolt before, uh, you still shouldn't have too much trouble killing her because her defense is pretty low. Then you have Shakina back here. Again, same deal. Like, you don't have to worry about bringing... You don't have to use a water element to kill her. You have a dark over here. Still killable. And then you had a whole bunch of thunder in the middle here that I just killed with my Sheeta. So you know what? Actually, um, maybe you don't need to bring that much wind because you just need to have Sheeta clear them out. And then the rest of them are just like a mix of things. So... Anyway, that's this level, and then we'll move on to the multiplayer maps. But yeah, pretty cool strategy, and this level is definitely a lot easier than the other one, because you don't have ra arrow rain coming down on your head every two seconds. Okay, so um, on multiplayer, a lot of cool options here as well. Um, it looks like they're going to give us uh, three different difficulties for the Mazamune um, farming level, and... They're all pretty doable. None of them are like impossible. And as we get more and more familiar with them, they'll just become easier and easier. I'm not really going to show beginner. Uh, very straightforward. If you have even one Ryle, you can just clear the whole thing. Like, I think they're pretty much all dark elements. So you want to bring a Ryle or something like that. Or even your turfing. That'll be fine. Uh, intermediate's a cool stage. Um, again, Ryle was a really good choice for this one. But uh, I think there were a couple of other elements and probably need like a tank to go up front, tank, take a few shots uh, just in case. Uh, I'm not sure why it's not connecting here. Okay, I'm back. It should work this time. Um, hopefully. Okay, yeah. So, okay, I'm just going to start and then get out. But I just want to again scan the map for you guys. Uh, intermediate's not too bad either, although you do have to be a little bit careful because some of these guys can dish out some damage. Uh, let me just show you a couple things to note. So I have limited time here because it is multiplayer. Uh, somebody is going to need to run up, the, somebody fast is going to have to run up this side here. There is an enemy hidden over here. 
And this guy in the back is a chronomancer, and he's going to be able to actually overclock um, both this ranger, I think, and this armored eldritch. Um, there's a turfing over... No, Lavatine over there. Uh, yeah. As you can see, they're all dark element, actually, except for Lavatine. So, yeah, that's why Ryle is such a good choice for this level, or turfing herself. Overall, um... This guy can definitely dish out some damage, the Armored Eldritch, so you have to be careful. I think this is another uh, Chronomancer over here. But as long as you have a tank and as long as you have, you know, somebody dishing out some damage, uh, preferably a Ryle, uh, it should be okay. It's not that complex. Yeah, time shift is the overclock. But overall, it's a pretty cool level. Um, and then the last one I'll show you is the Advanced, which is actually going to be a lot different. It's going to look more like the um, Sheeta axe farming level. And this one's actually good for Ryle as well, although there is a little bit of a, more of a mix. So yeah, you can see the level's completely different. So there's a water element dude up here. Yeah, pretty healthy mix, but... Uh, I used the Ryle the first time I did it, and I did just fine. I uh, just had a couple of... There was like a tank up front taking some of the shots. Okay, so this would be a good level for Magnus as well, because there's a lot of water element here. Uh, Ryle and Magnus would be like the best um, ranged attackers, and then you want to have like a tank up front. Um, so, I don't know. There's not really a whole lot to explain strategy-wise. Like, I went in with a bunch of random strangers, and... Um, there were like two of us left at the end. I was a Ryle, I was left, and then those the actually it was not even a tank, it was a Anastasia that survived the map. So yeah, I mean I think this water soldier guy might be a little bit strong on defense, but overall, even as a Ryle, I was able to kill uh pretty much any enemy, uh even with a couple of shots. Uh despite them being like water or whatever. So it's not quite as strict. But yeah, that's just my initial impressions. I mean, I'm not trying to get into too much detail here, but overall the difficulty is very fair and doable, even with a bunch of strangers, even if you're not that coordinated. And what's also cool is that um, they've also given us the option of doing the um, extra one and extra two online, which is like, really generous, I think, because, you know, 50 AP offline is pretty expensive, but, you know, still it's a good way to use your AP. But the option of doing it online just makes it that much better. So there's no reason you shouldn't have a 5-star bow. Uh, and if you want to, a 5-star axe as well. Pretty cool stuff. But I'll make a more detailed guide for some of these levels um, in the near future. But I just wanted to give you like a quick peek so you know what to expect. You're not jumping in blind. Um, I'm sure that you know there's going to be new strategies coming out that I'm not aware of. But for now, that's my initial impression the difficulty is fair. Uh, the hardest one definitely is the Shida X farming level. And um, even that one, I think, is you know doable if you just have the right party composition. So uh, good luck, guys. I'm really excited. I'm going to be on multiplayer a lot and farming up this stuff like crazy. And you do get 50 shards for Mazamune like right off the bat as soon as you clear the beginner, even once. because um, So you can make her and start leveling her up even without like a ton of farming. So yeah pretty cool stuff um i want to hurry up and get her to twin blade swordsman so i can at least start mastering that job because i think that's going to be my main for her but yeah the rest of the way i'm really looking forward to it and um yeah have fun guys see you soon